Is there a convenient way to express language and syntax in computing? Is it possible to express this in an abstract yet minimalist way that still actually encompasses the entire idea of the language? Well, we are moving into pretty deep waters here, but this is definitely possible. More on this after the break. This is 0612 TV. Well, welcome aboard. Hello YouTube and welcome to another random Wednesday video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a computing notation called the Backus Nor Form, or BNF for short. As mentioned in the intro, we are looking for a way to express a language, a grammar, or a syntax in a simplified yet all-encompassing kind of manner. But I'm going to try and make this easy to understand for you, so we're going to start off simple and kind of pile on the difficulty as we go on. So to kick things off, here's how we actually make use of BNF. Basically, BNF is just a series of lines of plain text, and the idea of all these lines is to have a symbol and actually define the symbol. After defining a symbol once, we can use it again in future lines. So let's start off very simple. Let's say now we have this. Now, how do we read this line? Basically, we will read it from left to right like so. A letter is defined as A. That's it. That is all there is to this line. Now, clearly, you know, this isn't a very useful definition and definitely not a very complete definition. So what we want to do is to somehow include, you know, the rest of the letters in this definition. To do that, we use the pipe or vertical bar symbol. And in this context, it stands for all. So what this means then is if I were to say this, you would read it as a letter is defined as A or B or C or D and so on. I hope you're following me so far. Up to this point, we've taken a look at the concept of a definition as well as the OR symbol, which of course will help us make our definitions a little bit more dynamic. Now, if you want to consider the mechanics provided to you by the BNF syntax, basically we've already looked at it all. Yes, really, it's just the idea of definitions and the idea of using the OR symbol. Essentially, that is all we have. However, there is one more thing we can do and that is what makes BNF so dynamic. What we are about to do is to actually exploit on the concept of a definition. Now, take a look at this. We have a letter so far. Well, that's not very interesting. Let us try to form words. You may be wondering how, you know, a word will look like. Well, guess what? This definition is extremely short. A word is defined as a letter or a word attached to a letter. Now, let's take a closer look at this. A word is defined as a letter. Well, that's fine. You can have, you know, words that are of just one letter. However, that's not interesting. We want to be able to build a longer word than that. And that's when we actually look at the second part of the definition. Now, if you've had any computing experience, you'll realize that this is actually a recursive definition. And well, I suppose I have to tell you what recursive means. Well, it means recursive. Formally, a recursive definition is a definition that makes use of its own definition to define itself. That sounds a little counterintuitive, but I'm going to show you how this works in terms of BNF and you'll see how powerful it is. So okay, let's start off simple. We're going to actually use the most basic definition of a word and that is simply a letter. So we have a letter. However, because of this part of the definition, what this means is that this letter is also a word. So let's look at this as a word instead of a letter. What we're going to do then is we're going to form the rest of our word. What can we do with words? Remember that a word is defined as a word with a letter attached to it. What this means is that if we were to grab a letter and stick it to the end of that right now, this still fits the definition of a word. All of a sudden, we have a word that is made of two letters. What we can then do is we can actually stick more letters to the end of this and however many we add, this is still a word. And that is actually what makes BNF so extremely flexible. By making use of recursive definitions, we can actually do pretty crazy things. We can create strings of any length. And if we have several more lines, we can really start creating very interesting combinations. Now, just to show you that this can indeed be practical, let's move on and do something even more complex to our existing definition. 
Bear in mind that with just these two lines, we can actually start synthesizing words of any length. Let us now try and make full sentences. What we're going to do first is we are actually going to define a phrase. As always, we start off with the basic case, a phrase is a word. That's fine. Then we move on to the crazy amazing recursive definition. We add the or symbol and then we say phrase, space, word. So let's break this down here. I'm sure you have a very rough understanding of what's going on right now, but let's try and make it more explicit. So a phrase can be a word. That simple, that is our base case. Or a phrase can be a phrase attached to a space attached to a word. Now, this is slightly different from our synthesizing words, seeing as that we didn't actually specially add a space character. However, the concept remains the same. Obviously, if you only said this, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take the words and stick them back to back, and that doesn't work correctly. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna space our words out. And we can actually just define a constant within our definition. So basically, when you wanna make use of this definition, you have your words, you have to add a space before you can tag on the next word. Using this definition recursively works exactly the same as letters. So, well, we can just have words and stick more and more of them together. And the whole thing still counts as a phrase. And there you go. That is basically how you'd use BNF to build up syntax rules for an entire language. Essentially, we've just defined how English works. We can go on to add, say, punctuation. We can go on to add, you know, definitions for sentences. Obviously, we do need to come up with a rigorous set of definitions so we don't miss out anything in the grammar. But as things stand so far, we can actually already create full sentences. And there you go. That will be the back as null form or BNF. Before we wrap up this video, let's take a look at something interesting. Well, guess what? The way BNF works can be defined in BNF. Now, to give credit where credit is due, I actually ripped this off Wikipedia, so you can go there and actually check out more interesting things about BNF. But yeah, that's it. That's all there is for this Wednesday episode. If you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow the official Twitter account for this channel at twitter.com slash 0612tv. As always, I appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. But until next time, you're watching 0612tv.